Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from one I know, East Coast Black Crip, Leonard Brown. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Thanks for joining the show. No problem. No problem. Yeah, yeah. So, um, shit. Let's let's uh, let's go all the way back a little bit. Uh, explain to everyone where one I know is uh, kind of based and located. Well, we're over here in Carson. In Carson, with the, the Lamo, more like it's more like on the east side, like like far like Wilmington and towards between Wilmington and Delamo. We started off back there in uh, let's say more like the early seventies. You know, I moved to Carson in nineteen seventy two. Okay, and I just was I was just seeing one night on the walls, and you know, I said, well, hey, well, this this must be the hood, but it's mainly basically. It's always been there. It's always been the Lamo Black Crip. It's always been like that. So therefore, you know, that's just something that it's always been. You know, it's no, you know, not, 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 nothing else beyond that. Mm -hmm. Nothing else beyond that. Yeah. So '72. That means they were pretty much there at the beginning of of uh, Cripping. It was already there. Yeah. It yeah. was already there. Yeah. Yeah. So how were you when you got put on? Well, basically, see, it, more, it was more like this. My coming up, my days of coming up, it wasn't no putting you on. It wasn't no, you know, rat packing and you got to go out there and beat somebody down or steal something to get on the set. You just from there. If you grew up out there, you from the set. So I didn't start really getting active until I was more like 13. Okay, which is what year are we talking about? We're talking about 75. Okay. Yeah, so we are definitely, uh, definitely talking to an OG, ladies and gentlemen. Like I had an older brother, which was... His name was Big CZ, you know, and we had our, I'm, I'm, all my little homeboys, we all had an older brothers. See, back in those days, we took names after our brothers, like it was Big CZ, Lil CZ, Big RT, Lil RT, you know, and so forth and so on. So therefore, we was more like following them at the same time. We was kicking back doing our own thing. But as they was out there kicking up dust with the other neighborhoods, we'd be on the sidelines, and we were more like, you know, hey, they doing their thing, but then we just come up behind them and can take up the slack. Like if they was gonna fight somebody, like I said, Manny back then was more like fight. It was like fist to fist. It wasn't no gunplay. Mm -hmm. You know, gunplay was very sudden, but gunplay was very, you know, weak back then. You know, we, if we had somebody shooting at somebody, it had to be something real serious. Mm, okay. You know, we we caught busting on your pad. That was more like we would ride by, shoot up in the air. That was most of the gunplay we had. As far as shooting at somebody, we shot somebody. It was something real, very, very serious. And basically, we just more like was we, we, we was more like hand to hand combat. But more like that was back in back in seventy seven, seventy six. We was more like hey, you know, we was out there doing our thing. You know, we started with carrying our rags. You know, uh, was that Stacy Adams? You know, pants, of pants. You know, Monte Carlo shirts. You know, Ace Deuce hats. All that type of stuff. We was doing our thing back in seventy seven. But it's more like we just more like follow them. At the same time, we was more on the, you know, took up the sack on what they did. If they fought somebody at school, we'd go up there and beat up the little brothers or something like that. That's, a, that, that's how we done it. It was mainly fist fighting, and it wasn't as serious as it is right now today. Ex explain to us how you guys ended up under the, the you know, the neighborhood uh, umbrella, which the block umbrella, um, how that whole thing goes, the East Coast umbrella, right? Isn't that one umbrella with it that you guys are all under? Okay, now, I got out of juvenile camp in 1979. When I got out of juvenile camp, I had a few, a few brothers who started 190 East Coast already. You know, Randy Scott, Ted Bull, Lamont Whitehead, those are the guys who officially, I know, started 190 East Coast. Mm -hmm. Because we were still doing something like leadership gangster players. So when we came back, it was more like 190 East Coast. I'm like, East Coast, East Coast, East Coast. So that was back in 1979. So I was like, man, what is this East Coast? So it just like simmered down and blended in. Next thing I know, it was like First Street, uh, what's that? Six five nine, six two, six eight. All, all the coast it was all as one. Mm -hmm. So it was more like you know what you call that. We, we it was more like you know all that. We we, we became one. That was a seventy nine. Okay. We became one. It was, it was kind of it was, it was difficult because we were from Carson. We didn't know everybody in L A. You know we we, we out a little bit. But we were that, 
that's, that's how it just came. It just came about one day, and that's thing I know. Hey, you know, we had we 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 what now? We just one big old set. What are some of the hoods in the city of Carson? Okay, now as far as the hood in Carson, we got Delamo Block. That's us. One nine zero East Coast. We're surrounded by the Cabbage Patch, which is Bloods. We're surrounded by Cindy, which is Bloods. We're surrounded by Scottsdale, which is Bloods. And then you got the Essays. So we're basically surrounded. Mm -hmm. if, there's anything, if there's anything new out there, we don't know. But as far as our high schools, we were all surrounded by Bloods out there. She was with the Pain Boys back in the day. But right now, I believe they're Ghost Town. Okay. We were surrounded with those people. That was Wilmington. As far as Carson alone, it's the Lamo Block. We got Centerview. We got the Cabbage Patch. We got, okay, now those, those, are, those, are, those are three hoods right there. Mm -hmm. Us, Centerview, and the Cabbage Patch. We're in the middle of all of that right there. Okay. Uh, speaking of the, the Latino gangs, what was the relationship like? or How, how did that kind of start did, when they started moving into Carson? Or were they already there when you were there? Okay, now, VP, with Victoria Park, they was always there. And they got Carson 13, they're a little further up by the Carson Sheriff Station. And they got Keystone, they're over there somewhere. I don't know exactly where they at. But see, all these guys, we went to elementary, we went to junior high school with them. And so as far as VP, those are the hoods that mainly, my hood be kicking up dust with. And see now, but see, personally, I know those guys. I went to school with him. We played baseball together. All of that. So we was all friends at one time. But to this day, I still may see someone shake their hand and we chop it up. And these new generations, they they still going at it. Oh, excuse me. I left our one hood. Um, Farmer Stevenson Village. That's another one. Stevenson Village Crip. That's another one. Mm. You know. But anyway, you know. See. So therefore, the VP as far as the essay neighborhood, you know, we we was more like cool. We went to school with those guys. The, the, it's the new generation that kind of like chopped things up a little bit. Kind of made things a little tough to where they start blasting on each other and shooting the Uncle B. As far as us back in the day, we we got along with VP. You know, I knew those guys. We went to school together. We had seen them out there. We worked together and stuff like that, you know. Mm. Now, Carson has a, a, a bigger than normal Samoan population, right? Okay, now Samoans, they was basically in Scottsdale. I mean, I said Scottsdale. They're by Scottsdale, and they're more like in the Wilmington area, more close to um, Banny High. Mm -hmm. so they, made, they, they was basically in Scottsdale. They, as far as Delamo, we didn't have too many of them in Delamo. So more was more like Scottsdale, um, you know, as far as Wilmington and so forth. Yeah, we had a few of them out there, though, yeah. Mm -hmm. They still out there to this day, yeah. Okay. I don't know, man. Some more were funny. They... They stick together like glue for one Man, thing. Man, right? And they, and they all cousins, so you fight one, you fight the whole family. <laughs> They're nice you as know. hell, though, right? They're nice as hell, and then just, oh, just man, don't mess with cool. my family. I, <laughs> yeah, man. I, mama, daddy, brother, everybody will come out and beat the hell out of it. I seen <laughs> them guys kick up some dust one day at Carson Twin Cinema like it was going out of style. Oh, word. They throwing trash cans, you name it. I just came back, and they, and they strong. You know, they 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 they're not like regular human beings. Don't <laughs> don't go don't go underestimate them. They must, they must be strong brothers. They they extra strong. They some strong brothers. They cool though. Yeah. You, know, you don't bother, you don't bother them. They don't bother. But they but they they close knit. They very close knit. And basically, all of them are all all of them basically are related in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. Somehow they related. Believe me. Yeah. 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 How did crack cocaine change Carson? Oh, man. Okay. It was okay. Okay, and let's talk about back in 1980. Mm -hmm. We were still on Sherman. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I had homies that was coming outside talking about the rock. I'm like, what the hell's a little rock? A little white rock? Let me like somebody put a swing shot and shoot at somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, how does it change it? It changed it tremendously. I have never seen. Young pretty sisters do the things that they did. Yeah. The, the ones that was the ones that was hard to get. The ones that turn their nose up at you. You get them fired out, bam, they do whatever. You know, women stop stop caring about their kids. They just neglected everything. It, it, it was it was bad. 
And then you got these young brothers rolling around in Benzers, you know, big old pockets full of money. Everybody was rolling, balling, balling back then. Either you was balling or you was smoking. So it did some it did, it did some serious damage to the race man. It's serious damage. And it obviously it brought gunplay into the mix that we've never seen before, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, because everybody, everybody was about their money. Everybody was about their money. Everybody was about their money and they dope. Everybody was doing everybody was, everybody was either doing one thing. It was either smoking or they were slang. So in the, the slang they they was about they they was gangsters, they was like they was with it. You know, they didn't, and none of that homie, homie stuff, that game maker stuff just played out. It was all about their money back then. You know, but it was it, it was a trip. Though. It was a trip. It was a whole, it was a whole different scenario than what you see right now. I mean, people had things. People was happy. Mm-hmm. Mothers, and, mothers and fathers and kids, they was all wearing nice clothes. Everybody was just cool back then. But you also had the base heads, the crackheads, the smokers, walking around dirty, wearing the same clothes every day, doing whatever they can to get a hit. So it was... It was a cold scenario back then, a cold scenario. Back in the 70s, drive-bys were almost unheard of. Well, drive-bys was really already in the mix. It just wasn't as rapid. It just wasn't as popular as, you know, it became. The first drive-by I remember was back in, uh, let's say, 77. Because I had moved over here in Mount Vernon. I went to Mount Vernon to hide. There was a party over there and some kid got caught up to my girl by a shot at it. So as far as the drive, drive I've always been, but you know, as far as the dope game itself, you know, it it had to do with that. They were just, you know, that was just something that was just, just like I said, it, it wasn't as big as it was. Guys were doing drive-bys as far as games, period. As far as the dope game, it was more like, hey, they walk up to you and get you. Mm. You know, they, you know, it, it, it was, dope was more serious back then. Yeah. You know, they wanted to get behind some dope, they was, they, they didn't drive up on you. They walk up to you. Mm. you know? So, case the, go ahead. Keep case going. the jumps off. Go ahead. Jay. No, no, case go the jumps off. I, 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 I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna mention no names or nothing, or nothing like that. But hey, you know, it was some serious mess behind that dope. They rolled up and killed women, kids, you name it. Mm. You know, families. You know, sitting in their car, wrong people, the wrong uh, mistaken identities. It was some serious stuff going on back there. Damn. Yeah, yeah. When was it most active in the city of Carson? What years, from what to what year, would you say? Okay, now, the most active, okay, now. Okay. Let's say more like the 80s. 81, okay. 82, 83, 84, 85, 86. Hmm. Okay. Because I left the world in 80. I went to 10 in 87 when I got back out everything changed how so but more like the, uh, I, I, well when everything changes when I got back everybody was gone so I, went to, I, I went to the pen like in um, 87 okay I got out in 88 I went back in 89 I got out in 90 mm-hmm. I went back in 90 I went back in 94 I got out in 2004 damn so I, I lost I, I did 9 and a half, 9 Ooh. and a half. Oh, yeah, and I still couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so when I got out after that, it was it was no more. It was really no more. But as far as the early 80s, that's when everything was really jumping off. We had the true homeboys out there, the real homeboys that was out there. Which when I got back, a lot of them was gone. A lot of them was doing time. Some of them got life. So, therefore, it was nobody to really keep a structure going like we had back then. Because see, we had a special going so good back then, man, to where on the weekends we had barbecues, we had the girls out there with us, we had it jumping off, we had it going on. When I got back out, all that was gone. It wasn't no more of that. That was just, that just disintegrated. Everybody moved away and, and I said, a bunch of them were doing time. Some of them come rest in peace. Some of them, you know, just, just to go. Mm. More like the early 80s was our time right there. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's let's go. Uh, we're talking early '80s, mid '80s when a thing called gangster rap came out and was the biggest thing in the world. Ice T, Six in the Morning, Schoolie D, N.W.A. Obviously, you were banging real hard at this time. What were your thoughts of gangster rap and these guys who were not really living that life, but they were talking about it? So the thing about this, the thing about this partner is this. When you're into that life, 
you can look at somebody and tell if they're real. Mm-hmm. You can basically just see their movements, you know, the way they, the way they, the, the, the way they walk, the way they talk, their demeanor. You can tell what they're about. And as far as those guys, let me give them a second thought. As far as that rap music, it was more like, you see, you got to realize, see, we came up on Marvin Gaye, you know, Tammy Terrell, uh, uh, Al Green. We came up on that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Temptations, that's what we came up on, you know. So as the new wave thing came in, we were still stuck into our old ways. I'm, I'm talking about us. Now, my home is more in their 50s right now. So it's a difference, you know. We came, we, as far as that new way, that new rap stuff, I mean, we liked it as Q because he was talking the truth. You know, public enemies. Some of those guys are something we liked with those guys right there. But all this other stuff right there, it was more like, man, go on with that mess. They don't want to hear all that stuff, man. Mm. I'm not trying to diss those, diss nobody, but it's just, it's, we came up at a time with where everybody was real. Yeah. If you weren't real, then hey, you can start just, just you, you don't exist. You don't exist to us. 88, we're talking specifically one of my favorite movies of all. Uh, my mom would not let my stepdad take me to see it. I had to wait till it came out on VHS and the privacy of my own home and the safety, I guess, as you would say. But a movie yeah. called Colors came out and yeah. exposed the world to what was going on in Los Angeles. How important would you say Colors was to yeah, spreading Bloods and Crips across the country? Okay, now Colors, okay. First of all, some of that stuff in there you know, was was real. You know, but as far as the way they made the county jail look, that was not real. How so? Explain that part. I mean, they not gonna put a bunch of bloods in there. First of all, county jail they don't have no weights. They had now, now, now they had Aaron back in the eighties. Yeah, they did on, on the roof. Okay. But they ain't gonna put no blood or something. And he gonna be on a bench. And they gonna come out just beat that. It don't work like that. You know, and they ain't gonna have a bunch of clips on one side. Bloods on the other side and some gay going at it. That part does not exist in the jail. That was my favorite part no. too. <laughs> yeah, that does not exist in the jail. You know. Yeah. You know, therefore, all that right there. You know, but as far as the drive-by, you know, with Rocket and all them type of guys, you know, that part, you know, can happen. It did happen back in the day. But as far as that last part, to where the, the Mexicans were shooting at Rocket and them in that house in Compton, it did look like Compton to me. Mm. You know, that right there, you know, no, that that wouldn't have went down like that, though. You know, they wouldn't have been in one little house, you know, high, not waiting for somebody to come out there. No, that, no, that, that wouldn't have went down like that. And the essays, come by that shoot them up. No, it just put more props on the essays. Maybe like they the one keep the most dust. They don't work like that. Mm. You know, so therefore, it was more like, that was more like to just advance one one group to another. Make it look like you know, we the ones calling the shot. We the ones we, we the ones doing it. They don't want they don't work like that at all. No. Mm. No. Okay. Let's fast forward a few years. Take me to the time that you remember specifically about, you know, just the, the Rodney King um incident that led to the riots, that led to the gang truce. What was what was going on in Carson around that time? Okay now. Carson was quiet. Cross has always been quiet. Mm-hmm. A lot of the truth was more like in Watson, L.A. and all that. And I kicked it over there on 74 in the Hooperhood neighborhood for a time. I went over there to that little park over there on Manchester. And they all of that dancing and partying and stuff like that. But they was all having their truth back then. But as far as my hood alone, we was more like on the quiet side. See, when Rodney King thing jumped off, it was more like, on the outskirts of us. Because see, Carson, Carson really sits by itself. As you notice, they got a say in one nine only. Carson really sits by itself. So when that truth was jumping off there, you know, it really didn't affect us one way or the other. Hmm. We didn't really care about it. We wasn't really into it. We didn't more like, we just doing our thing. You know, but the truth was more like for the most, for the most serious things that was going on in the other black like watch and comp and LA and all that. that, that that's what the truth really would had its benefits right there. Yeah. That's funny that you said that because my uncle bought a house in Carson um, years ago, you know, 20, probably even 30 years ago. And I remember us where we lived at the time wasn't a nice area, but we saw Carson as, oh, he's moving to a nice neighborhood. Like, we always saw yeah. Carson as like, oh, damn, you moved up, huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
everybody think of Carson is the, is the rich race. Well, the rich race is called the rich grips. It's oh, called okay. uh, interesting. It's yeah. a nice area, true enough, but they have some they have some dark sides to it. Yeah, yeah. Some real dark side. I can I, I, I can take you back to the sixties where there's some planes that went down that hey, you know, they don't know nothing about. You know. <laughs> I want to know your specific thoughts on Nipsey Hussle and the, the whole shooting and killing of Nipsey Hussle. Oh, man, you know what? I didn't really know of him until the day it happened. But to this day, I hate it. I hate it with a passion into the fact that was a young brother and there was a lot of that he could have done for his homies and the community. If somebody just, you know, take him out like that, they didn't, they didn't just destroy him. They destroyed a lot of opportunities for a lot of blacks that tried to have no way out. Because he was helping God that just got the penitentiary. When you got a pen, man, it's tough out there. Nobody want to hire you. Nobody really give a damn about you. Mm-hmm. So therefore, that really, that, that kind of hit me. It hurt me. Because I, I, I all at all one time, I just found out what he was about. And it was like, man, why? You know what I mean? That was, you know, it just didn't have to be. So that's what kind of hit me kind of hard, you know. It, it, it hurt, it hurt, you know. It hurt, you know. Yeah, yeah, that was a tough time. And something that's also recent, I, I know you don't keep up, I'm, I'm assuming you don't keep up with all the hip-hop that's going on, but I'm pretty sure you know about this story because it was probably the biggest story in the past year in hip-hop. Are you familiar with Takashi 6 9 Who's that? Are you familiar with Takashi 6 9 well, I've seen bits and pieces of that little dude, but... The story you know, behind him? Just, Are you familiar with the story behind a, him? I don't know nothing about him. He, he just looks stupid to me. Okay, well, let me explain Let me explain him to you, and then that'll give me a better, that'll give you a better idea to answer the question. So uh, he he was basically uh, bought into the, the Bloods. The Bloods, you know, accepted him because, you know, they saw this little superstar here, and he was somewhat extorted. And I know that's been going on in hip-hop you know, back to when even, you know, Biggie was aligning himself with the Southside Crips and Tupac was aligning himself with the MOB and Chris Brown aligning himself with Fruit Town and, you know, all these other guys aligning himself with Crips and Bloods after they're already famous. But that's his whole story. Um, he became a blood, I guess, as show for show. And then he uh, he got involved in a bunch of crimes and he snitched on everybody. They did a bunch of years and he's going to be out in July. So that's a rundown of Takashi Six Nine. So based on your whole life as a, putting real work in the hood, spending time in jail, what are your thoughts on on someone like him? Well, first of all, he was stupid. Second of all, he messed off his life and any chance of doing anything with his life. Third of all, if he don't shake your leg, they're gonna get it. That's the bottom line. They gonna send their soldiers out to him, and that's the way it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What he did was not right. And so he got all these tattoos on his face; he can't hide himself. <laughs> you know, he can forget about that. He just messed his life off. I mean, he's yeah. just go somewhere and live like live like Grizzly Adams somewhere in the wilderness where don't nobody know who he is. <laughs> yeah, he stand high for the rest of his life. Somebody gonna get him. Yeah, so, that, 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 that was kind of dumb. You know, I mean, you don't do no stuff like that. Yeah, and in fact, you don't get involved with known game members unless you grew up in that area unless you know these people you don't just join nothing at the age of 20 something years old you don't do that you know anybody gets this get this up with a gang at a later age they're kind of stupid you better say read those books and say, do what you've been doing yeah yeah i always like to play devil's advocate and i think the the gang is is just as much a fault that they shouldn't have allowed a dude like this with no background check you know just yeah. to get this close to them and infiltrate basically infiltrate and told everything yeah yeah no you know when you're really into it man it's like us right we didn't let nobody just come with us if we didn't know you from knee high i'm talking about from elementary school you know you wasn't one of us and to this day you're still not one of us all my homies i knew for 30 40 50 something years Finally, that long, you ain't considered a homeboy. You're just a, a partner, an associate, or something like that. But I won't trust you. If I didn't grow up with you, if I didn't go to Broad Acres Elementary School with you, Curtis Junior High, or Batty High with you, I don't really know you. 
I just heard of you. You're just somebody, okay, we cool. How you doing, partner? Yeah, shake up and bust with other than that. I don't really know you. Mm-hmm. That's the way it works, man. Yeah. Can't trust, can't trust nobody these days. That's the way it really works. You, you spent a nine and a half year stretch in prison. Explain to people what it's like being a crip. I'm assuming you were still banging at that time, if not, correct me. But, um, you know, being a crip entering prison, how does that work? You know, how do you link up with other crips? Like, uh, crips and bloods, are you guys just hanging out? You know, explain to, you know, everyone out there what it's like just walking into prison being a crip. Well, first of all, of course, you know, convicts run the pen. Before you hit the yard, Everybody gonna know that you're already there. So you hit the yard, and your homie's walking up to you, handing you this, handing you that, giving you care package, this and that. But as far as your question alone, you already know once you hit the yard. Everybody already know who you are. Everybody already know about you. Everybody know what set you from. So therefore, you're all the way in. Now, if you got some kind of beef with somebody, they let you know, maybe your enemies over there, we gotta have it. Other than that, you know, it's just like more like. Everybody's going to embrace you. Now, as far as the pen, the pen has a, a, a stronger structure than the streets. We don't really trip on bloods. We don't trip on red rags. I got some high, some Damus or some of my favorite page that, hey, that's got some high rank in what they do. You know, so we're more like the brothers in there. We're not on that red group chicken. We're on the more like a, a black man thing because if something's up off, I might have a Damu to watch my back. Or I might be yeah, watching this. Yeah, you have to unite because the Latinos have it locked down when it comes to number-wise, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So then we got, you know, we got the guys from um, up north. We got the guys from other clips that's, that's, that's more like Riverside and so forth. So we just all got to be as one. You know, we can't really own, we can't, we, we're not really on that, that sex of thing. And we're not really on it. We all represent what we represent, but we still, we're as one in there. We're, we're all black men as one in the pit. He's just one. Okay, yeah. Now, thank you, uh, uh, Leonard, for for sharing your story. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug? Any anything coming up um, that we can help you promote? Well, not really, man. You know, you kind of caught me at a, a time when I'm like, okay, let me think of what I'm gonna say. Make sure I don't you know go off on the deep and say the wrong thing. So, mm-hmm. no. yeah, for, oh, it's all good, but you know, I just want to make sure you know your thing is my thing is right. And hopefully, I can you know, hopefully, I assist you guys in the best way possible. Yeah, no, that was that was great. That was great because th- my my thing with my shows i don't like to glorify gangs i just want to educate people tell them the story that you know this is really going out and i I, my thing is i don't like to interview anyone under 40 if you're under 40 you know i I don't want to talk to you you know no offense but 40 and over you know is is the people i want to talk to because you know you guys made it through you know what i mean i don't want to talk to the people who are going through it right now i don't want to talk to the ones that are going through it right now i want to talk to the ones who made it through and let these kids know that you know keep keep your your stuff together and 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 there is hope on the other side. Um, have you ever thought yeah, about? Yeah. And, and people think I have some issue with these guys or anything. But uh, you know, uh, Alex Alonzo and Kev Mac videos—they're they're my idols. Um, I really enjoy their, their mm-hmm. stuff. Um, contrary to what a lot of people, for whatever reason, think out there. But um, have have you yeah. have they ever approached you? Because I really think you should you should, you have a story to tell. Have they ever t- approached you? Well, not really. No. Only way somebody would know me if they see my Facebook Facebook post. Uh, can I possibly make the connection? Because I I do have a connection to to both of them, and uh, I, I think your story needs to get out there. You're, you know what I mean? Would you be okay if I did that? Yeah, be my guest. No problem. Okay. Man. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Cool for sure. Well, thank you, uh, Leonard. It was a pleasure talking to you. Have a great night, and I'll, I'll definitely be close in touch with you. Okay. Okay. No problem. All right, All right man. Take care.